I'm Ankur Sharma, you're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. I'm alongside Pradeep Reddy for three of our Intercontinental Cup preview. This time around, we're doing Stimachi's philosophy. A lot of fans have been asking that. Do we quite understand his philosophy? I think it's still a little bit early to dissect his philosophy because we've only had two games and he's probably looking to see what best attributes the players have in, in terms of which ones can suit his system the best. So I think we'll start to get a better understanding by the end of the Intercontinental Cup. But I think we can have a look at and see the different things that he did at the uh, mm. King's Cup yeah. to get a brief idea at least of what he's trying to do with the players. Yeah. And speaking to the players as well, yeah. they seem to have an idea of what he likes, he'd like them to play. Um, and it's about how they can get, how mm. quickly they can get to understanding his philosophy. Yeah. And Do they like what he likes? I think they seem to. No, no player's ever going to admit that they don't like it yet. Fair so, especially when the team's winning. Yeah, so. sure. All right. So, of course, we played two games uh, and we sh we saw two different Indian football teams, which was sure. encouraging because it showed that we can adapt. We That's can true. do yeah. different things. Yeah. Uh, we can not just attack, but we can also defend, especially in the second, second game. game yeah. Let's start off with the first game. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of uh, the performance against Kyrgyzstan, especially in the first half? How did we line up? I think the way he set up was a little bit different from the previous setup. He set up with a what you call a 4-3-3. Yeah. And what was different to see in this game is as soon as the keeper got the ball, he wanted his centre-backs opening up and yeah. making themselves available for the ball. Yeah. Something we hadn't seen much of in the past. Yeah. Um, maybe only in the Wim Kovermans era, we'd seen mm -hmm. the team trying to play out of the back. Yeah. So when Gutfried had the ball, he definitely had options. Try to get the full-backs in high positions, high yeah. and wide. And most importantly, trying to get this player, yeah. Brandon, coming and getting on the ball in the game yeah. to help start a lot of the attacks yeah. out from nice the back. Corner. In the yeah, Pranay, yeah. Sorry, in the first yeah. in the first game over there, yeah. and as we could see, this allows midfielders to get into higher positions. And what we were seeing, and we saw bits of it in the Curacao game, was actually our midfield, our uh, fullback, sorry, getting into better positions, getting on overlaps, yeah. being able to get the ball in yeah. in the final third of the field, yeah. which we didn't see as much in the last couple of years with the Indian team. A lot of our fullbacks. Primarily, role was yeah. defending and yeah. swinging in. They were putting in crosses, but a lot of time there were deep crosses. Uh, you'd see from Preetham, and of course. Uh, you'd very rarely see Subhashish yeah. in this part of the field. Exactly. Even though he likes to attack. Even though he does. Yeah. So I think it suits the style of play with the players like Raul Beke and others. Yeah. And by having the midfield play more passes in yeah. here, we had more possession in this part of the field, allowing fullbacks to get forward and build up. Yeah. Whereas in the past, you could see that they were trying to get from back to front too quickly. So it doesn't really allow the opportunity for the fullbacks to get forward, mm. and especially with the win, the pace that Chanke yeah. and uh, Udanta have. Yeah. Uh, so with Constantine, obviously, we tried to counter-attack quite a lot, and this time around, do you think the approach was a little more proactive, especially in the first game? Definitely. I think he's. You could see from the first forty-five minutes itself that he was encouraging his players to pass the ball more, yeah. but pass it with an intent. It was there was yeah. a purpose to the passing. It was yeah. to pass to try and ex create space try and pass the ball to yeah. break the opposition up yeah. and then look. But at all times, he was trying to get them to look forward and play forward. Yeah. Um, in the past, obviously, we played forward, but it was a little bit too too quick. Yeah. And True. in the if you look back, uh, maybe from prior to Constantine's era, when it was under Kovermans, yeah. a lot of time we were playing possession, but it was possession for the sake of possession. Yeah, just, just keep possession. Just keep possession, but without any, yeah. There yeah. was no intent to get forward or there was no purpose to the possession. But like Louis Van Aert United. Yeah. No comments on that. But, <laughs> but at least now you can. I think with Steam Match, there's a, there seems to be a purpose for the possession, and I think the players understand that that he still wants them to attack, and he's given them the freedom in the final third of the field mm. to do a certain things. So I think that's why the players seem to be playing with more smiles on their faces than mm, they, yeah. they have in the past, and that's right. a promising sign. Yeah. What did you think in the in the first half in the defense, especially because uh, I remember us having a chat about this that. Uh, you, you thought that the full-backs went back and the centre-backs were, were in front and that caused a lot of defensive mishaps? Yeah, I think it's, once we'd lost the ball in attack and and the Curacao team was attacking us, defensively our back four was just all over the place. We had times where Subhashish was behind the final last yeah. player and playing them onside. Play, yeah, playing play them onside. Side. Yeah, yeah. And at times we'd have BK stepping out and just no cover in the gap. So as one yeah. centre-half steps up, you want your players to narrow and yeah. make the field compact. And that's something that the fullbacks mm. didn't do at times. So there were too often, it looked as if it was Raul's fault yeah. for stepping out, but at yeah. times the rest of them didn't cover and compensate. Right. But it's... It's a new defence starting for the first time. Absolutely. And yeah. teething problems, we'll, we'll put it down to teething problems. And yeah. um, 
I think that's something that should be easy to fix. Yeah. But question marks on whether with a new coach, whether the intent is primarily on yeah. making us more of an attacking yeah. unit and there's less focus on the defensive side. Yeah. Almost the polar opposite of what it was in the past. True, which yeah. obviously made a lot of fans happy. So uh, in the second half now, he made a lot of changes. Big changes in terms of the style of play. We were looking like a different team, but in the last, in the first part of our uh, preview, you said that that could also be down to the fact that Kurosawa became complacent after scoring three goals, and we became we were up against the anti, so we performed better. Yeah. But again, some changes, encouraging changes. Rainier came in, and Amarjeet came in as well, and immediately you saw something new. Chante also, uh, well, he wasn't very effective in the, in yeah, the first think, half. Uh, side came absolutely, in I think Ch Chante was a bit. Yeah. Invisible in the first half, hardly yeah. hardly had a touch of the ball and yeah. didn't really cause yeah. uh, much problems to the Curacao team. Exactly. Um, Brandon initially came, was yeah. switched over there and yeah. then later yeah. Susiraj, Susiraj came, came on there. Yeah. So we had a bit more... I think this was still a weak weak yeah. point. Yeah. Most of team. our attacks were coming down the right. Coming down the right yeah. side. So the ball was more focused on that side. Yeah. But at the same time, we had weaknesses down, down the flanks, especially yeah. Curacao had a lot of advantage coming down from that, that side of the field. True. Um, yeah. But I think the the big the big changes were I think with Pranay coming out and yeah. um, Rainier. Rainier coming in, yeah. we kept possession better in this part of the field, mm. and it's it's vital with the way Steam Match is trying to play yeah. that this player yeah. can dictate a lot ball. of it. Play football. Yeah. So if this player doesn't play football, <laughs> yeah. then the system breaks down with yeah. what he's trying to do because yeah. then you've got the fullbacks up in high positions. Yeah defenders here and if mm. he loses the ball you're immediately exposed to a counter-attack true so it's vital that yeah. players like Rainier yeah. or Amarjeet or Vinit yeah. Rai yeah. they're much better in playing yeah. possession football in this yeah. position and yeah. comfortable coming and receiving it here with their back to goal yeah I think that's the future we might see more of this with the um, steam match yeah so in terms of the way I saw it I never felt like there was only one holding midfielder I always thought that Amarjeet was always with Rainier and they were kind of playing in cohesion with each other and I often saw Amarjeet pressing quite um, aggressively and while Rainier had a bit of a free reign in terms of playing passes from the deep I thought Amarjeet was a bundle of energy and was trying to press on people do you think he's also a holding midfielder or do you think he's going to take up a different role in the national team I think with the the way he wants him to play at times it's it's not fixed because obviously it becomes a lot easier for your opposition to mark players if if you know he's always the one receiving the ball opposition teams are going to work this Attack out him. so he had some good midfield rotation with his players where players would be pulling out to allow space for somebody else so there's some good midfield rotation that we were seeing in patches yeah. in the second half of the curacao game and we saw a little bit more of it um in the in the second half and in the next game yeah. but it's still a work in progress so i think we'll once he fine tunes it and finds his best three midfielders, yeah. we'll probably see a better understanding of how we possess the ball and how these players move. Oh, yeah. On to the second part of it, I think just with the players' attributes, Amarjeet is more of a what you could call a traditional box-to-box -box type player, whereas Rainier is more of the one who likes to stay back and spray the spray the passes around. So the attributes of the players and Vinit Rai is similar in that respect. Yeah. So you'll see because of the attributes of those players, like Papa will always look to get yeah. get forward and support the attack. He's not going to primarily just sit and hold, yeah. Um, yeah. irrespective of where, where you're playing. Sure. Of course, the biggest highlight in the Kurosawa game especially was Sahel Abdul Samad and everyone was just raving about him. What sort of role do you think he played? Because it felt like he was essentially like a number 10. I think the difference a lot of time with Sahel is when he plays, he doesn't look to just pass the ball and stand still. When he mm -hmm. passes, he's always looking to get forward and look to try and get in advanced positions mm -hmm. and at times he, he made a brilliant run forward as well and just a uh, yeah. heavy touch and uh, yeah. couldn't get hold of it yeah. but that's that's what is exciting about the way yeah. he plays he looks to get into the box yeah. he's got great timing yeah and he's got a great vision and range of pass too so when he does receive the ball in these areas he does look to drop his shoulder and try and beat beat a man yeah. and also look to play the likes of Udanta and the likes of the yeah. other winger in yeah. so he does like to occupy this kind of free space, what yeah. you know, you, you'd call behind the striker. Yeah. Another thing that I kind of felt, uh, Pratim, was that Udanta, while he plays here, and he went, sometimes when he's too deep, uh, Sahel would like to drift to the right as well. And a couple of times in that game, Sahel was the one who was playing crosses in from the right, and Udanta was not. Do you think that's mostly down to the fact that he's heavily marked, or or do you think just it's Sahel being given a free role? I think that's 
the, one of the ways Sahel plays is he likes to find space. So if he recognizes that Udanta is hugging the touchline and playing as wide as possible, then Sahel trying trying to occupy the space yeah. is an intelligent move from yeah. the player. And he does have the ability to cross the ball. Yeah. But I think what we probably need to start seeing a bit more is of these players not just staying out wide and trying to support a bit more centrally. Yeah. So you see Udanta has done it this season for BFC yeah. where he's cut inside, scored a couple of goals and got into more dangerous positions by getting inside in the final third of the field. Yeah. And similarly, Chanti has done it for Delhi Dynamos where yeah. in the final third of the field, he's been a bit more effective by coming inside yeah. and not being what we would call an old-fashioned winger where they're just staying wide and Try to putting, cro yeah, cross putting crosses in for yeah one man in the box. Yeah. So I think this is something that's a work in progress and yeah. hopefully we'll see yeah. more of that. Yeah. And again, with a genuine number nine yeah. and maybe J3 playing off in a different position, yeah. we could see see us being a bit more threatening, yeah. especially when we go forward. Yeah. Glad you brought up because I was about to come to J3 because for me, that was the biggest disappointment. The fact that we didn't utilize our best player and we felt a little isolated. Do you think it's down to the fact that we don't have a number nine yet? And what exactly do you think should be his role under Stimans? Because while we all enjoyed his football a lot, this guy could have been involved a little more and we probably could have enjoyed it a lot more uh, than we did. I do feel we need a genuine number nine yeah. who can lead the line and then whether Steam match chooses to play with somebody off of him mm. or maybe even a couple of players off of him yeah. is, is, is somewhere where we'll get the best out of uh, yeah. out of Chetri yeah. in that free space again. Yeah. Because again, he he has the experience and timing to get into the box at the right time. But I don't think he's he's the man to lead the line and play as a number nine anymore. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, of course, like I mean, he's not tall enough either, right? So you want your players to be winning headers, like your number nines, to be holding ball and maybe spreading it down to the wings. Because I personally prefer that way of national team playing, uh, whether you have a hold, holding number nine tries to open up uh, spaces for the wingers to run in. Do you prefer that as well? I think, in respect to Chetri, the best you've seen him play and score a lot of goals is when he's playing alongside whether it's the likes of JJ or whether yeah. it was Robin before that and other players. So yeah. he allows them to lead the line and he can yeah. pick up the space in front of the centre-backs. Kyrgyzstan especially. Especially, yeah. That was a fantastic goal yeah. and that's that's where he's the most yeah. dangerous. Yeah. And you've seen it for BFC as well. He occupies this space on yeah. the left wing and then comes inside. True. And at times at BFC, they used him behind Nico, yeah. where he was very effective as well. So Scores a lot of goals as well. And that's, yeah. So if he's scoring goals from those positions, I think we should, shouldn't tamper too much with that. Absolutely. And especially at this age, you can't yeah. try and teach them to play yeah. Completely different position. Cool. Of course, then in Thailand, a different different team altogether. Eight new changes coming in. What do you think he tweaked in this formation from Curacao to uh, be performing better against Thailand? I think what we all thought at the start of the match, looking at the personnel, we thought Balwan would play in that position and Farouk would occupy one of the wide positions. True. And then the question mark was if Vinit Rai played in his normal position, yeah. where would we feature with Anirudh Tapa, Amarjeet, and, yeah. and um, Rainier? Yeah. So it was because you've got yeah. essentially yeah. Four, four, midf four central midfielders. Yeah. I think we we could see at times in the game we ended up with Balwant and Farouk a little bit more centrally, mm -hmm. and it looked almost at times like a diamond in midfield. So something that under the Croatian team we saw quite a lot of, and a lot of people would you know you call it a four one two, two one two, one, two. two. Yeah. Um, or a four four two diamond, yeah. and it's something we'd seen. Um, I think Croatia has done that a lot on this team match and something that he probably is comfortable with and maybe he'd like to see India be able to play yeah. maybe primarily in this mm -hmm. formation or this has one of the formations that they yeah. choose to play in games yeah. to give them a bit more flexibility yeah. and to pick up from where we were talking yeah. about Chetri I think this might be something that suits yeah. um, Chetri really well because he could play off of a number nine Which in this kind of, of yeah. Yeah. and this also allows whether it's a Brandon or a Sahal, to be in a more advanced position over here and have a little bit more freedom. True. And with the fullbacks that we have, the likes of Raul Beke and mm. Pritam Kotal might enjoy yeah. the ability to roam up yeah. and give us the width higher up the field. Yeah. But at the same time, it requires a bit of tactical intelligence from these two players of when to recognize to protect these areas and yeah. when to narrow down and protect the central part of the field. True. So at times, defensively, you might have to flatten out mm. and protect these spaces, yeah. which 
towards the yeah. latter part of the game against Thailand, you could actually see it was almost True. easy yeah. to drop into this formation yeah. to give us a bit more defensive solidity, solidity or yeah. even at times a 4-1, 4-1 defensively. Mm, yeah. to, this is very, like, very much like Constantine. Yeah. yeah, but it helped us um, protect the lead that we had yeah. and also helped us play a bit of football as well rather yeah. than be as direct as we were under the previous yeah. uh, regime when we yeah. played this way. Yeah. So it's the same formation, as you said, under yeah. Constantine, but yeah. when we won the ball, it wasn't the same style of play. So that's the biggest difference, I think, that we noticed yeah. in the King's Cup. Yeah, it's not just about the formation at the end of it, is it? Like, it's also about the intent of the player. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, again, like if I take the freedom to like, sure. do the whole thing, because I love doing this. <laughs> so, of course, the formation that we played in the Thailand game, especially the players that we played, they suited this formation, but now, of course, one of the biggest trends that India has is we've got pacey wingers who can create Absolutely. a lot of opportunities and something that we've gotten so many wins out of in the last two years and constant that it would be stupid to change it. So, how do you think like Odanta and Ashik can be incorporated in the same formation? Because against Thailand, again, it got a little drab, we did get the result, but if we get our old formation back, we get our strongest players, this is Odanta, Chetri and Ashik back, how do you think we can accommodate our new players in as well, which is Sahel and Brandon? Because, again, let's be honest, we can't accommodate them all. Absolutely. I think that's that's the key point. We can't accommodate them all and it's you've, it's got to be horses for courses. There's going to be games where you pick a certain lineup, maybe based on the opposition, based on the conditions, and maybe if it's a home game. Mm. Uh, but I think what one of the things he could do is, because we lack genuine number nines who are playing regularly for their club, maybe we can have a as Constantine tried it with Ashik in one of these positions with Chetri as a combination. Mm -hmm. Maybe, as we discussed yesterday, maybe even Odanta, who's used to playing a TFA, mm -hmm. he used to play in that position for, yeah. uh, for the club, he was top scorer in the under 19 I League playing in that position. Mm -hmm. So he has the ability to play there. He's a proven goal scorer. And crossing is probably not one of Odanta's strongest features, although he's improved on it. Yeah, so I think by putting Odanta out wide there at times yeah. and putting Chanke out wide here, yeah. Although they've got pace to burn, there's yeah. very little end product from them. Sure. So you might get a little bit more end, them in. Yeah, keeping them more central, whether yeah. it's Ashik or Rodanta, yeah. you might get a better end product from them sure. playing them in this position. And yeah. with their pace, playing against centre center backs, yeah. if they beat them, there is no cover. Whereas when sure. they beat their winger at a fullback at times, there's, there's, there's always a, a cover, there's yeah. covering defender. Sure. So you could be a lot more dangerous with using our pace in these positions rather yeah. than uh, out wide. To summarize it, what do you think really is Igor Stimatis' philosophy? I think his philosophy, he wants to get the players onto the ball and, and play more football. Yeah. He wants them to be more positive with their intent. So every every pass, he's looking for them to try and the pass has to have a purpose, whether it's yeah. to break the opposition, to yeah. shift the opposition or to penetrate. Yeah. So we're seeing a little bit more of that in the way they, they set up and the way they play. Mm. And I think that's a good change from, from the previous. Yeah. And that'll help with the uh, confidence of players because players like to see yeah. um, freedom that they're allowed to express themselves on the ball rather than be too concerned about their defensive yeah. responsibilities. Yeah. But finally, whilst we're talking all about this attack, one thing he does need to address and we'll hopefully see it in this Intercontinental Cup is the defensive issues were there throughout the King's Cup. Yeah. And it's papered over the cracks by the victory against Thailand. Yeah. But it didn't mean by hmm. Thailand still had plenty of opportunities Absolutely. and Amrinda saved, Amrinda saved the day and yeah. Adil made some last ditch tackles as is Sandesh. Yeah. And so I think this is some an area where a lot of work needs to be done. Yeah. And hopefully we'll we'll see this being rectified because irrespective of what happens up here, yeah. if we defend the way we did, yeah. we're not gonna win many games. Right. So we can we can keep this side of the pitch to Eagles team match and this if we keep on steam, I think we're good. <laughs> That would be a good blend. Yeah, that'd be a nice layman way to put it. Yep. All right, guys, that was our part three. I've lost count now. For the it was part three, yeah. It was part three. His math is good. Uh, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye. Goodbye.